America, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By honoring your sacred vocation of business, you impact your family, your friends, and your community. At Grand Canyon University, our MBA degree program is 100% online, with emphases in business analytics and finance to help you reach your goals. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. You're listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. You're listening to the Archaeology Show. TAS goes behind the headlines to bring you the real stories about archaeology and the history around us. Welcome to the podcast. Hello and welcome to the Archaeology Show, episode 200. Pew, pew, pew. Wow. On today's show, we talk about the history of the calendar. Let's dig a little deeper into why Rachel did the little finger movements when she said, pew, 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 because nobody can see that. (laughs) (laughs) Happy New Year. Oh my God, you're the worst. Before we started recording, I was like, oh, we should put in like a sound of one of the little thingies from New Year's Eve. And so nailed it. Now you have that sound in your ears. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Way to start 2023. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a start. All right. So this episode is all about the numbers because it's our 200th episode, which in the grand scheme of things just means it's after 199 and before 201 (laughs) and actually doesn't mean anything. No, but it is a nice round number. And don't we yeah. love nice round numbers as, you know, modern humans? It is. The show's been going for five, six years now. And I think five years at least. It's gone through some changes, many changes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've been doing this for the last couple of years, which we talked about a little bit on the last episode. But we just wanted to, I guess, acknowledge a little bit that this is a number, episode 200, but also... If you're listening to this in real time, we're listening, we're releasing this on New Year's Day, 2023. Yeah, it's super random how the 200th episode happened to sync up <laughs> with the first day of 2023. Yeah. So we were like, well, what are we going to talk about? We got to do something special. And you had the amazing idea of let's look at calendars. Yeah, we actually kind of thought about doing something live, too. But I'm like, uh, who's going to show up on like New, on Year's, New Year's Day? Day yeah, yeah, like that's so, a big ask. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was wondering about calendars. We're mm-hmm. we're talking about the year 2023, mm-hmm. but what does 2023 look like and why isn't it star date 3492.6 <laughs> yet, right? Like where does that evolve Your to? Your dreams. I know. So for anybody that doesn't know, that's Star Trek. Yeah. But that's a good segue because Star Trek has done a lot of good things, right? They've done a lot of things right as far as the prediction of future sciences go. And in fact, the modern, well, not modern anymore, but the flip phone was modeled after the communicators that were Mm -hmm. in the 1960s Star Trek because a bunch of nerds had developed it and they're like, wouldn't this be cool? And they did it. Mm -hmm. And then we all had flip phones for like five years. Right. But the thing is, you know, our calendar that we use now will evolve into something when we get to the point where it is no longer appropriate to measure time and days and, and the things that we do based on the rotation of the earth and it's its orbit around the sun, Mm -hmm. right? But that's what all the calendars, including the one we have now, have been based on throughout time. Right. It's called a lunisolar calendar. Yep. So let's talk about it. Yeah. So what calendar are we in right now? Yeah. So we're currently using the Gregorian calendar, which is a word that I had heard before. Obviously, I knew that we're using the Gregorian calendar, but I didn't know any of the history of it. So that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. This was instituted in 1582 by Pope Gregory the 13th. Hence the Gregory. Gregorian. Right. Yeah. Uh, and as a aside, I think today or yesterday, uh, Pope Benedict the whatever died at like 93. Mm. He was the first pope in 600 years to actually resign the, the papacy. Mm-hmm. And most of them just died in office. Mm-hmm. But anyway. But today they're, I mean, they're in charge of a large church. But back in the day, it wasn't just being in charge of a large church. It was also like putting out decrees that apply right. to everybody in the world even which is how we ended up with a, right. a, the gregorian calendar well and we didn't really talk about this but i'm curious as to your answer on this why do you think the church controlled the calendar as opposed to now well it might be because the a lot of the higher learning was coming out of monasteries right so maybe all the astronomers and such were right. were the ones figuring out the calendar so it came out of the church Maybe, but I think based on what we're going to talk about as far as what that calendar is based on and going back in the days, Mm -hmm. the church had to control when religious events and festivals were happening. Holidays and things. Yeah. Yeah, And a lot of all that was based on 
you know, observations of the moon and the mm-hmm. sun and where those things were happening. But the church basically said, listen, we, we're going to celebrate this on this day. Mm-hmm. That was really important to people. And they had to yeah. know what day that was going to happen. Yeah. And it had to be the same for everybody or else yeah. like you're losing sort of the the sacredness of it if you don't have right. everybody celebrating the same day. Now, the calendar and time and things like that are maintained by governments now because mm-hmm. we call it more of a civic calendar. Yeah. It, it's still the Gregorian calendar. It's based on that, but it's more of a civic calendar because we need calendars to conduct our lives and mm-hmm. business and yeah. appointments and things like that. Whereas back in 1582 and beyond, they didn't really need that. They just cared when is Christmas, when mm-hmm. is Easter, mm-hmm. when is, you know, certain things going to happen. Oh, it was definitely a driving force. I mean, yeah. there was business too, but I think it was just a little bit less right. formal as far as dates and things go. Yeah. And I want to mention in segment three, we're going to bring in a bunch of other calendars, but I wanted to walk this calendar back okay. that the majority, the we use. The, when, I'm, when I say we, the majority of our listeners looking at our demographics are from the United States. Mm-hmm. So presumably you're, unless you're lunar um, mm-hmm. or use the Chinese calendar, <laughs> right. then you are using the Gregorian calendar, mm-hmm. right? If you're celebrating New Year's Day today, you're using the Gregorian calendar. Mm-hmm. And to be clear, I think other cultures and other places use this calendar as well. It's just they might have a secondary calendar right. that they use for holidays and things. But this one drives business. I mm-hmm. mean, the stock market is based on this calendar. So therefore, like most of the world uses this calendar. Right. So the Gregorian calendar, again, named for Pope Gregory, was enacted because the Julian calendar, which was being used before this, had gotten out of sync with the solar cycle by about 10 days, mm-hmm. which means... Whenever their calendar said, hey, it's supposed to be the equinox, it was actually about 10 days. Oh, I 10 see. 10 days later. Yeah, they <laughs> I think probably it was 10 days later. <laughs> they're probably missing like that quarter day or whatever that you yeah. need, right? It yeah. means the equinox, I can't remember what direction it went, but if if they had Mar- they had Mar- they had the normal months that we do, but if the equinox was say March 21st, the spring equinox, it was actually like March 11th by that time mm-hmm. because it gotten off by so much, yeah. right? It was right. either that or February 1st. Yeah. Because I can't remember what direction it went. But mm-hmm. anyway, and it must be, I think it was a head because when they adopted it, they just flat out dropped 10 just days from the calendar. 10 days. Yeah. yeah Cause it wasn't back working. Sink. Right. Yeah. Interestingly, even though England and the Americas were still very religious as, as we know around those times, there was a lot of contention and some splitting from the Catholic church oh, and, really? and people not really paying attention to what was going on. You know, mm. they were, you know, the reformed Catholics and Protestants and all that kind oh, of stuff. Oh, right. They didn't follow the Pope. So they probably <sighs> right. weren't interested in doing what the Pope said to do. Right. So right. that's why it took them nearly 200 years to actually adopt the new calendar. Wow. Yeah. They were still using the Julian calendar up until around 1752. And that's England and the American colonies. Which is crazy because in that 200 years, it would have continued to be off. <laughs> so it probably right. got even more and more off in that time. Well, and the funny thing is, like, they may have been using the Gregorian calendar for religious dates, mm-hmm. but it the note I actually have here says they didn't drop the 10 days oh. until 1752. So weird. Yeah, so they like, still would have been, like, way off. <laughs> yeah, that's super weird. I don't yeah. even know how you would live your life like that. <laughs> yeah. Now, the Gregorian calendar, as we know, and here's where it gets interesting, has 365 days mm-hmm. and an extra day every four years. That's mm-hmm. because we actually have 365.24 and change days. Right. Right. So we have a leap year every four years to make up for that 0.24. Mm-hmm. But notice I said it's not 0.25. Right. So you've still got a remainder to deal with. It's dealt with every hundred years by skipping the leap year. Except when that hundred year, that centurion is divisible by 400 and then you do have a leap year. And the reason it's confusing is because Right now, in this current world, year 2000, that's divisible by 400. So we had a leap year in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. But 1900 did not have one. 1800 did not have one. 1700 did not have one. And 2100 will not have one. And 2100 will not have one. Because it's not divisible by 400. Exactly. It gets very confusing. But those 100 years are are skipped, except for the ones divisible by 400. Right. So it hasn't affected modern, you know, populations yet. Right. And that's just to bring basically the equinoxes and everything else back in line with whereabouts they should be on the calendar. Otherwise, you'd be like getting pushed out a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more every year without that. And it does happen. Right. Like you like sometimes equinox is on the 20th. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like your birthday is sometimes yeah, my at the birthday fall is, equinox or not. Yeah, it's September 21st, <laughs> and sometimes it's the equinox and sometimes it's not. Usually, I think the 20th is the equinox. Right. My poor sister, though, her birthday is February 29th. So we always joke that she only got a birthday every four right. years. So, yeah. Which, you know, with all this these calendar fluctuations, like dropping days and doing things, mm-hmm. people that were born in those time periods where things were just like dropped, it's going to get real interesting for them here in a minute. Very confusing. Yeah. yeah. So... But let's go back a little bit farther. So what's the Gregorian calendar based on? We already Mm -hmm. mentioned it's based on the Julian calendar. Mm -hmm. 
So with the Julian calendar, it was around 10 BC that it was found that the priests in charge of the calendar were um, basically adding leap years every three years instead of four. Oh. As decreed by Caesar. Okay. And so the they result, were just off by a year. Yeah. And the result that, yeah, the result was that they actually said, okay, it's 10 BC. They didn't know it was 10 BC. They had another name for it. Uh-huh, right. <laughs> they didn't know it was BC. Mm-hmm. And um, so they didn't have any leap years for 18 years. <laughs> yeah. Because they had to catch up. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't until 8 AD <laughs> that they had another leap year. It must have been so confusing to like yeah. just all of a sudden not do a thing that you'd been doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So the Julian calendar had been in use for a little while um, mm-hmm. and it was based on a reformation of the Roman Republican calendar, which mm. we'll get to in a minute. Mm-hmm. But there was a lot of stuff wrong with the Julian calendar. A right. lot of things were going like a little bit haywire for it with it. In the 40s BCE, the Roman calendar was ahead of the solar calendar by three months. Mm-hmm. The Rome, the one the Romans used, so mm-hmm. the Julian calendar. It was ahead by three months. Yeah, that's a, right. lot. <laughs> that's a lot. So Caesar, on the advice of the Alexandrian uh, astronomer Sosigenes, who had a big influence on a lot of this stuff, mm-hmm. basically kind of introduced some ideas from the Egyptian solar calendar. And this is what actually was the first time the length of the year was set at 365.25. Okay. They hadn't got it precise enough to be 0. 0.24 24 and change. Or whatever, yeah. But 0. 0.25 was pretty close. And and these were the first ones to divide it into 12 months mm-hmm. of 30 and 31 days. Okay. So February had 28 days, though, like it does now. But the weird thing is, on leap years, they didn't have a February 29th. They just repeated February 23rd. It's so weird. Like, why February 23rd? Yeah. So if you were born on February 23rd, you had two birthdays every four years. <laughs> I'm sure they celebrated cool. birthdays the same way that we do they now. They may not have. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's interesting. So basically, we got to the point that we were at with the Julian calendar because it was sort of like a mishmash of mm-hmm. a bunch of previous calendars just kind of being put together in a way that they hoped would work well-ish, right. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so in order to align the calendars around this time and and get everything back on the from the civic calendar that they used for, you know, public events and mm-hmm. stuff like that to the solar calendar when the equinoxes were and such, mm-hmm. in in addition to this realignment of the calendars, Caesar just added days to 46 <laughs> BCE. So you may have thought 46 BCE was going to come to an end at 365 days, but no. <laughs> they went to 445 days. Wow. Because so they crazy. just arbitrarily like added days to make up for it to get back yeah. to where it should have been from a solar perspective yeah. i'm assuming yeah exactly right however the astronomer sausigenes overestimated as we mentioned he said 365.25 but it's actually 0.24 and change well that equates to about 11 minutes and four seconds and it turns out that's kind of a big deal mm-hmm. over a longer period of time and then as a result by the mid 1500s the cumulative effect shifted the dates of the seasons by about 10 days and mm-hmm. that's how we were off by 10 days and that's when the pope uh, pope gregory was like all right we need a new thing here hey it'd be great if you named it after me <laughs> so uh, and then they made right. the, the gregorian correction although it was still basically the julian calendar they just corrected they just it corrected and, but they it. gave it a yeah. whole new name yeah. so yeah well because it sounds like not everybody adopted it at the same time right. so it kind of had to have its own name for a little while there yeah and interestingly enough though the julian calendar is still in use for religious dates for a lot of religions mm. that's why easter moves so much oh. it's not based on other stuff it's based on the julian it's calendar based on the julian calendar yeah oh. easter well and a lot of religious holidays from christianity mm-hmm. are based on that and uh, a lot of other religions it's okay. based on the julian calendar right, right. so it fluctuates throughout the year mm-hmm. uh, a little bit differently than uh, than our other dates mm-hmm. all right so when we come back we will talk about the roman republican calendar and where its roots came from because this just keeps going back and back and back (laughs) and everybody just kept kind of shifting and saying you know what this calendar's not quite right (laughs) let's start a new one back in a minute save on o'reilly brake parts cleaner get two cans of o'reilly brake parts cleaner for just eight dollars valid in store only at o'reilly auto parts oh 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 o'reilly auto parts Is your vehicle stopping like it should? Does it squeal or grind when you brake? Don't miss out on summer brake deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Welcome back to the Archaeology Show, episode 200. And we're talking about calendars. So we started with the Gregorian calendar that we're in now. We went to the Julian calendar. And that was based on, loosely, the Roman Republican calendar. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't really know... The exact origins of this calendar. Right. But legend has it that Romulus, the founder of Rome, started this calendar around 738 BCE. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like it likely evolved from the Greek lunar calendar, Mm -hmm. which makes sense because 
a lot of Roman stuff evolved or was influenced by the Greeks. So that right. kind of makes sense. Yeah. And this calendar that they used contained only 10 months uh, and a year of 304 days. Mm -hmm. The remaining 61.25 days were basically just ignored uh, as far as the calendar goes <laughs> and resulted in a gap during the winter season. If like, because it now, was like dark and cold. So they're just like, yeah, we're just going to mm, like pretend like that doesn't exist. Yeah. When the sun's <laughs> over there again, we'll start paying attention again. Yeah. But until then, we're basically on vacation. Yeah, everybody just like go home, sit by your fire, <laughs> drink warm things. We'll see you in a, in a couple of months. <laughs> see you in a couple of months. Yeah. yeah. So the months that they had, and you might recognize a few of these, and mm -hmm. I want to I want to read them out, were Martius, which is clearly March, mm -hmm. uh, Aprilis, Maeus, Junius. There's a couple in here that are just thrown in uh, because of the, well, the remainder of these are the Latin words for the numbers five through 10. Mm -hmm. So Quintilis was July, as we know it now. Sixtilis was August. And then you have straight up September, October, November, December. I know. I love that. I love that September, October, November, December are actually the Latin words for seven, eight, nine, and 10. Yeah. But there are nine ninth 10th 11th and 12th months right <laughs> which is just crazy yeah. when you but start back thinking then, about that and back then they were the 7th 8th 9th exactly and 10th months. exactly yeah it's like we've just ever you know modern modern people have just dropped yeah. the, the the meaning from those words for those months pretty much yeah, yeah. we kept them as the end of the year but mm -hmm. uh but kept the names so the roman ruler numa Pompilius actually added January at the beginning and February at the end to create 12 months. And in 452 BCE, February was moved to between January and March. How do you just decide? <laughs> to you just know like what? move it. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to bump this over and move this. It's almost like they wanted December at the end. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because February, I think, was at the end. And then it was moved to between January yeah. and March. Super yeah. weird. But it the list that you had just named off of all the different names, it does actually make sense that they basically skipped January and February. Like in mm -hmm. my mind, January and February were the 61.25 days yeah. that they decided to ignore because it's deep winter and nothing's going on anyway. There's right. no, there's no solstices. There's nothing to celebrate. So those just get ignored. And it was January and February. Mm -hmm. So now we get January and February back, I guess. Yeah. Which is crazy. So now we go back to what we mentioned before, the Greek lunar calendar. Yeah. The Greeks, like many societies and, and sort of tribal based societies back then. They weren't really tribes. They were more into, into I they don't even know if they were really on. city states. Uh, yeah. They were like smaller towns and things like that at the mm -hmm. time. It, these towns and stuff, they had no single calendar really. Uh, instead, these communities, like I mentioned, had their own calendars and they're all of course based on the lunisolar. It's called, it's one word, lunisolar. In fact, mm -hmm. if you try to type that into any sort of Apple device, it's going to change it to uh, either lunar? lunatic soul <laughs> or, or what was it? Lunar, uh, lunar solar, I think is two <laughs> different words, but it just couldn't handle it. Anyway, so the lunisolar alignment or, or calendar is basically says, as far as the big dates of the year go, like the equinoxes, the, mm -hmm. the spring, fall equinox, the summer and winter equinox. Solstice summer and winter solstice mm -hmm. and the spring and fall, fall equinox. equinoxes. Those are based on the phases of the moon, essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. Not the phases of the moon, but where the sun, they're not the, based on the phases the of the moon. The sun and the moon alignment, they're, they're, right? No, they're based on when the sun hits the horizon. Okay. 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 So where, where the sun is hitting the horizon and it's, it's furthest extent, wherever you live. Right. Right. That's right. That's where the equinox yeah. is. Right. So, or the solstice. The solstice. The solstice, the solstice is, is the high the, point yeah. in the summer and the low point in the winter. Yeah. And right. equinox is when they're, Equal. Well, the, the equinox is, is when a day. day is the equal length, yeah. you know, day and night. Yeah. But it's also at a certain point on the horizon that you can measure that. Right. And then the lunar part of that gives you your months. Okay. So when you first see the new moon, oh, like the, the first, phase of the moon, the basically. phase of the moon. Yeah. So when you first see the first sliver of a new moon and, and it's uh, it's not called the new moon. Well, I think it might be. But it's the first the first just hair of a sliver of a moon mm -hmm. that is. And when it right when it comes over the horizon, that is the start of a month. OK. Right. Yeah. So. They would all use basically the same method. And we've, I mean, people have been using that to sort of mark time, whether they called it a calendar or not, mm -hmm. since we started really developing agriculture, mm -hmm. right? Before that, nobody really cared too much. Didn't pay they, much they attention They followed to the animals. Sky. Yeah. yeah. They followed, they followed food resources, things like that. And when people started getting more sedentary, well, they had to know when to plant. They had to know when to harvest. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to harvest before it freezes. And generally, if you harvest before the fall equinox or near there, then you'll be fine. Right. It won't freeze. And then once the spring equinox hits, you can start thinking about planting again. Right. Depending on where you're at. And so that's the lunisolar calendar. The 
number of months, the names of the months that these communities had, however, were usually based on their local festivals that they held or the deities that they honored. Mm -hmm. So they would name a month and each deity got its own month or each festival got its own month. So they were named based on these events that were important to them. Mm -hmm. Of those Greek lunar calendars, the Athenian calendar is the best known, probably because Athens was, you know, a powerhouse. Yeah. You know, even back in the day. Yep. The year began with the appearance of the first new moon after the summer solstice. So the year actually started in the summer. Okay. Yeah, so after you, after the summer solstice, when the sun was at its highest point in mm-hmm. the sky, and it started coming down again, and there's usually a couple of days where it's at its highest point. Right. I mean, there's really only one, but as far as they could tell, there was probably a few mm-hmm. with the measuring they could do back then. And then the first new moon you had was the start of your new year. Okay. Mm, summer new year. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Months were 29 or 30 days. Mm-hmm. A year was 354 days, plus or minus one. Um, leap years were 384 days plus or minus one Hmm. and that required usually a second or later month so they had to add a whole month because it sounds like they did their leap years it doesn't really say in my notes um, but it sounds like they did their leap years every few years okay just to make up for it yeah if it's 10 days off yeah then because 354 days plus or minus one that's 10 days off what we have now right so every three years you would have to have an extra month to make up for it right, right right That's why leap years were 384 days. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Crazy that they didn't figure out that there was like an easier way to do that. <laughs> yeah, just make your day longer. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. math. <laughs> so. Or make the year longer. Right. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go back a little further. This calendar was based loosely around, and I wouldn't say, I think based, when you start saying based in this context, it's not like they were using another calendar no. and started to use this. Yeah. It's more than likely They got the ideas from earlier people about the lunar solar alignment Mm -hmm. and things like that. And then their calendars were named and functional based on their local deities and stuff like that. Right. But loosely based on the Babylonian calendar. They were some of the they were going back a little farther. They were already doing this. Yep. Uh, In use from around 2000 BCE. And that's conjecture. uh, And it's based loosely on when they actually created the Zodiac. The Mm. Babylonians created the Zodiac. Yeah. Yeah. So they basically named all the constellations that we know now Mm -hmm. and they're tied to astronomical events and Mm -hmm. and things like that. So we know the signs of the Zodiac as roughly equating to months. Uh Uh, But of course they don't follow our calendar. The signs of the Zodiac don't. Yeah. Isn't that why like technically the Zodiac calendar, there's different lengths on different signs that aren't really. Yeah. Like if you really get into it, like certain signs are much longer and then there's like the forgotten sign that's somewhere in there that I don't know a whole lot about it, yeah, but I, I do know that it. like if you really get into the the Zodiac stuff, like there's a lot more there than just like one every month. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 They, of course, had a lunar solar calendar like most more advanced societies mm-hmm. did back then. Yep. They, they of course, had a lunar, sal- uh, lunar solar calendar. It had 12 lunar months. Mm-hmm. So solely based on the month starting when the first sighting of the crescent moon happened. Mm-hmm. So however long that takes, it's that about 28 to 30 days. Yeah. Then you uh, you call that a month. And inter, they call it, this is a nice calendar term here, an intercalary month was inserted as needed by decree. So whenever they're... When they got off. Yeah, whenever their months got off from... From the solar. What they could observe with the solar observations, yeah. they would just add another month. That's so interesting when you think about it, because they are looking at two completely different phenomenons yeah. that they can observe in the sky. One is what's happening with the sun, kind of more long term, yeah. seasonally. And then the other is happening, you know, much more frequently with the moon phases. And they're trying to like marry those two things together. And obviously we've figured out a way to make it work today. Yeah. But it takes a lot of like finagling this whole. Right. Even what we do today is super weird. Like with (laughs) with the leap years and then skipping them if they're divisible by 400 and blah, blah, blah. So like it's just so crazy. It's hard enough for me because I work with a lot of people from different countries and we're about the only country that orders our month day year as oh, month day year. Yeah. Everybody else does it day month year. Yeah. And it really screws right. me up. Well, and you know what? If you really think about it, it makes so much more sense to do the smallest bit of time first and then go up in size, right? So the day would be the smallest then the month then the year. So I totally get why that makes more sense. But it's not the way we do it here. <laughs> it kind of does, but then it doesn't because I want to know, I, I know what the year is. I don't really care what the year is when I'm just mm-hmm. saying it, right? And I really want to know Okay, what month are we talking about? And then what day are we talking mm-hmm. about? That's how I that's how my brain does work, probably because I grew up that way. Because you grew up that way. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the Babylonians inserting these intercalary months 
makes it incredibly chaotic for archaeologists and historians to figure out anything that's going on for about <laughs> oh, a thousand years. Oh gosh, I'm sure. Yeah, because yeah. they didn't call this month that they inserted the same thing every time. Oh, okay. They would just insert it. And then when you're looking at, there's a lot of Babylonian writing out there mm -hmm. um, on clay tablets and things like that. And when you're, when they mention dates, which they do frequently, like it's really kind of difficult to tell yeah. exactly what they're talking about sometimes. And I wonder, was it like everywhere in Babylon would get these months inserted or was it like this region over here did one and this region over here did right. one to like make things even more crazy and complicated. Yeah, because they weren't that unified. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so the Babylonian calendar goes back a little further uh, based loosely again on the Sumerians. Uh -huh. Sumerians came before the Babylonians. Right. The Sumerians invented what is considered by some to be the first calendar, like the first real like Let's write this down mm -hmm. and hey, everybody, it's May 1st, right? Mm -hmm. Keep track of time and have a specific way of referring to right. a specific point in time. Yeah. And in the they invented all this in the, the later centuries of the third millennium BCE. So a long time that ago. That is a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you talk about the first calendar ever invented, I did see a little bit of a pretentious note that was just like <laughs> a little bit, you know, he didn't need to mention this, but the... Uh, the Indian Septarishi calendar begins around 66, 76 BCE. Mm -hmm. And the Mayan calendar, which we'll talk about later, starts around uh, August 11th, 31, very specifically August 11th, mm -hmm. 3114 BCE. But there's no yeah. evidence that they were, of course, invented on those dates. They just Went said, back that far. they just invented a calendar and said, okay, so if we walk this back from where we think we're at, mm -hmm. here's where the start of our existence starts or their calendar at least. Right. Yeah. So. Again, the Sumerian calendar was lunisolar, like pretty much everything was back then. Mm -hmm. uh, the day was based on the rising and setting of the sun. Months were based on the lunar month and the cycle of the moon through its phases mm -hmm. as, as I mean, basically we did all the way yeah, up through. Yeah, just, just like, yeah. I mean, what else do you have when you're trying to mark time? It, to yeah. it totally makes sense that, that that's what they relied on. Right. And then, of course, the year was based on the solar cycle and the mm -hmm. positions of the rising and setting of the sun on yeah. the horizon. Yep. Yeah. So some of the purposes of calendars, like we've alluded to, religious festivals has been mm -hmm. religious festivals and like harvest and planting schedules mm -hmm. has been really the two driving forces of marking time for some reason. Yeah. Throughout history. Right. Because yeah. otherwise, why do you need to know specific dates? Right. And and it's why hunter gatherer communities didn't really keep track of time in any specific way, at least not that we have evidence of in the archaeological record at this point. Which is why time is weird, right? Yeah. Like time yeah. is totally invented by humans. It's completely invented. You go yeah. back to early uh, you know, anybody, Homo mm -hmm. sapiens or early hunter gatherers even, some people that could communicate with each other. They weren't planting anything, they right. weren't doing anything. They right. didn't know how old they were. They may have a sense of maybe have a sense of how many times they've seen a full moon you mm -hmm. know but did they really care enough to to track that like mm -hmm. i've seen 1200 moons but could they even count to 1200 yeah do they have the language that allowed them to count and to mark that number of yeah. things it's crazy it's, it's one of the like really the failings of archaeology is because you just can't ever know that kind of stuff you really yeah. can't now you can bring in you know, ethnography a little bit and, and look at some of the hunter gatherer communities that exist today in the world mm -hmm. and look at how they they track time. And maybe you can get an idea of what a similar community from 500 years ago or 5000 years ago yeah. would have been doing. But you're just taking a guess. It's all going to just be an educated guess, because unless you find a specific hard not just artifact, but context around that artifact to tell you what you're looking at, then there's just no way to answer right. that question. That's the that's the hard part about archaeology and also the interesting part, too, because it is fun to, like, guess. Yeah, for sure. Now, we could have covered a lot more calendars here. And you have to remember that if you go back far enough, every local area had some sort of way, really, once they started marking religious time, mm -hmm. but they had some sort of way to say, OK, now we're going to have this festival. Mm -hmm. We're going to have this religious experience. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like they didn't really need calendars when it was just agriculture. Like it seemed like if as when long the as festival part it, came it, in, yeah, as long yeah. as whoever was keeping track of it said, okay, it's basically the fall equinox. Yeah. You need to har harvest your stuff yeah. right now. Yep. You know that kind of thing. It would have been rather than this lunar lunar solar thing. It would just be solar essentially because right. you're just tracking the seasons at that point. But it does make me wonder about people who live in like far northern latitudes, or for that matter, far southern latitudes, where they're like, you know, in the summertime, their mm -hmm. day is twenty hours long or yeah. longer. 
And in the winter time, their night is 20 hours long Again, or longer. Probably tracking time completely differently yeah, in those kind of ca- communities. And what do their calendars look like? Yeah. Do they know? have them? Or did they have, I mean, they do now, obviously, but did yeah. they back in, you know, 500 years ago? Did they even worry about that kind of thing? Who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah. Well, actually, somebody probably knows because that's not that long we ago. Don't know. We just didn't yeah. research that specifically because the idea literally just popped into our heads right now. Right. So, yeah. So one of the things that a lot of people probably have heard about because <laughs> back, what was it? It was just a few. It was 2012, I think, was was supposed to be the end of the the, world. The day the world was going to end. We'll talk about why on the other side of the break. (laughs) People are driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. The hiring process can be slow and overwhelming. Simplify hiring with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform. With over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash P-O-D-K-A-T-Z 12. That's Indeed.com slash P-O-D-K-A-T-Z 12. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to episode 200. And we're talking about calendars on this first day of 2023. Yeah. And now Rachel did a bunch of research on the Mayan calendar. So let's talk about that. Yeah. I mean, it's such an iconic calendar, right? With that, the circle with all of the hieroglyphs on it. Mm -hmm. If you have ever seen an example of an ancient calendar, it's probably been one of the Mayan ones because they're so, they're just so distinctive. Mm -hmm. And they're really amazing too. They consist of several different calendars in one, kind of like what you would think because you're tracking days and years well i mean they did it a little bit differently but it's basically like days months and years they were kind of doing it like that but they didn't call them that and they had different periods of time that they were tracking so the names of the calendars were the zulkin the haab and the (laughs) long count yes so let's start with those first two the long count we'll get to at the very end the zulkin calendar is based on a ritual cycle of 260 named days And what I mean by that is like an actual day that has a name that they could refer to it as something. 260 days had names. Yeah, but they weren't like individual names. They use like this system. So like when you look at the circle and you had like a wedge that would line up from the middle out to the end, like those wedges would line up in certain ways. And then you would get your name based on where that wedge was lining up. So it yes, they had separate names, but it was based on this system so it wasn't as individualized as it might think as you might think it was now the hob calendar had 365 days which was basically because they were tracking solar stuff just the way we do so that's how they got to the 365 day number Hmm. now within going back to the zulkin within within that there are two smaller circles of days that are numbered from 1 to 13 that would be the inner circle on the mayan calendar And then around the outside, the next circle was an ordered series of 20 named days. And that's how they got to the 260 is from that 1 to 13 and then Mm -hmm. the 20 named days. So you would have one number from the 1 to 13 and then one number from the the 1 to 20. Okay. And when the Zulkin ended, it would start over immediately after that. And it was used primarily for planning religious ceremonies. That was the main point of that calendar and keeping track of those days. And when you had a named day like that, you could easily plan a festival or whatever it is that you needed to do for that. Now, the Ha'ab, the 365-day year, it was divided into 18 named months, which are known as urinals. Not urinals. Not urinals. It looks a lot like urinals. (laughs) It is missing a key letter, (laughs) so it's (laughs) urinals. And those were, they were made up of 20 days. Mm -hmm. And then there were also, there was also a final month, a 19th month, of five nameless days <laughs> called the UAEB U- UAEB or UAEB 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 yeah so i just thought that was so funny is they had these five nameless days and i didn't really like get into that research too far but i think it just had something to do with like thinking things back up with whatever mm-hmm. it is that they were aligning with with the sun and the moon and all that now all of that taken together forms a longer cycle that is 18,980 days long 
Yeah. Or 52 years. And that is what we call the the calendar round, all okay. of that together. And that is why that date that you said before were that it began at August 11th, 3, 3114 BCE. Mm-hmm. That's because that's where that first round of 18,000 began for them. And they were somewhere in there when the calendar was developed. They're somewhere right. in that 18,000. So I don't think that they were actually tracking time that far back. That's just how far back their calendar went. Okay, so now let's go from there to the long count. Because obviously a calendar that accounts for 18,980 days, <laughs> like that's a lot of days to be tracking and they called it the long count. Mm-hmm. And that was the continuous marking of time from that beginning date that we just mentioned. And it is exactly as it sounds. It's it's like from the, from the very first day on, right? Right. And the way they did it is they had one, two, three, four. They had five numbers with a decimal point in between each one. And those numbers would tick up kind of like the way an odometer would tick up, right? So the one on the furthest right was counting up. And then when it reached a certain number, which I actually can't remember what that number was, but each one has a number that it would tick up to. And then when it got to that point, then the next number would tick up one. Hmm. So for example, the final day, because there 13 was the final number, 13.0.0.0.0 would be the final number. The right. final day in this count. And that first number, the very largest first number is called a baktun. Right. So a baktun is 144,000 days long, which is a little less than 400 years. And 13 of those represents the entire like creation cycle for the Mayans, which is how we got to the world ending on December 21st, 2012. <laughs> <laughs> because that was the end of that the 13 Bakhtuns would have ended on on that day. That that, date was 13.0.0.0.0. Yes. Yeah. For them on their calendar. Well, interestingly enough, Mm -hmm. there are a number of apps on the app store for Apple and Android. (laughs) I was wondering what you were doing over there. (laughs) Sometimes you like check out from the conversation a little bit and you start doing something over there. And I'm like, I know he's preparing something good over there. (laughs) I don't know if this is the one he made, but I know somebody who he's actually another podcast host and he made a Mayan calendar app. Oh, Really? Yeah, he's a Mayanist and he made a Mayan calendar app and uh, I can't remember what his name is. But okay. So if you open it, like it just shows me right now that the date right now in this long count date is 13.0.10.3.2. Oh. Okay. okay. So it kept counting up. Then well, they, it can. they just kept going. Yeah. I mean, it, why not? Like right. Cosmologically and spiritually, they're like, that's impossible. No, 13 the is end. where it ended for the Mayans, but <laughs> yeah. there's no reason why it can't right. go beyond I that. I mean, it's still a system that can be used. Yeah. Now, it shows me two other things here, too, and they all kind of run together, and I didn't really realize that I think they're separate, but I also see 13 ik, like, or LK, or look, LK. Oh, okay. 13 LK, and uh-huh. I also see 15 k unk in. Yes. Okay, so each of those numbers, and I had that, but honestly, like, it, it was so complicated to... to describe how they were counting up the numbers on the phone count. <laughs> I actually nixed all that from the notes and I was right. like, we don't need to look at them, but Hey, you're bringing them up. So we will. But yeah, each of those is each decimal has its own name. And those words you just read off were the names for each of the decimals. Okay. And each of them was a certain length long. Like I, the first one is like 18, I think. And then the next one after yeah. that is uh, 20 maybe or something. I don't remember, but they, they count up to a certain number and then they tick over basically. Well, the cool thing is you can see this date. You can hit a button mm-hmm. to see the date in the Mayan glyphs. This is today's oh. date. And I'm, I'm showing Rachel the oh, date. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. I love it. So What's the, my birthday? Uh, oh, man, that's <laughs> tough. I'm going to have to type it in. Uh, your birthday is, let's see, September, which is Latin for eight, nine, seven, seven. <laughs> oh my God. I thought you took Latin. <laughs> do you want your year or like your next birthday coming up? Uh, do the year. Do my birth year. Okay. So we got. I should be in the 12s then, shouldn't I? Or no, I guess. Yeah, 12. 12 back to. So yours is 12.18.10.5.6. Wow. Or six kaib four to n. <laughs> That's awesome. What does my hieroglyph look like? <laughs> Oh, All that's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So the app I downloaded, if you want to check it out, is just called Mayan Long Count. Mm-hmm. Maya Long Count. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it's pretty cool. And this is the light version. I don't know why I would pay for it. I mean, I guess. But anyway. Well, if you get really into it and sounds like some people do, I can see why you yeah. would because it's just, it's a much prettier way to it count time cool. with the 
meet hieroglyphics and stuff like that. If you go to the arcpodnet.com website and you look down in some of our past shows, I did this show called Arc 365 or 365 Days of Archaeology. Mm-hmm. And the logo that I used was basically I traced the Maya calendar. Oh, yeah. It totally and it's, was. it's on the front. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. I used that. Mm hmm thinking that that show would have an end in uh you know 2020 <laughs> 2012 2012 mm-hmm. no i started it well after that yeah anyway well, so the yeah. one other thing i want to mention about this because the whole 2012 phenomenon was that the world was going to end right because that's when the mayan calendar ended but i thought we should point out that the mayans never predicted the end of the world they never said that when this calendar comes to an end that means that all things are ending all they were doing was just just projecting out a really far time from where they were at the moment that they created the calendar. Like 2012 was really far away from when they created the calendar, you know, 2000, 3000 years ago or whatever. So it wasn't the end of the world necessarily. It was just like a point of reevaluation for them. Like we're just going to shove it all the way out there and then we'll reevaluate what to do when we get there. What's happening when we get there. Yeah. And they just didn't get there. That's like, well, actually they did. There's plenty of Mayan people still like alive and well in Mexico. I just don't think they're really using that calendar anymore. It's like that's like Microsoft saying Internet Explorer will be unsupported by summertime <laughs> of 2020. However, people still keep using the damn thing. Stop doing it. Right. They didn't predict the end of the world because you can't use Explorer anymore. <laughs> There's other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, the difference is the Mayan calendar is pretty ingenious. And I think it actually could be continued to be used. If, mm-hmm. And it is. If you download that app, you can continue to use it. It's just a little bit more complicated to the modern world. It's very Star Trek like. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, because it just keeps with going. With the decimals and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Cool. That's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, the more, like, if, if we were going to talk about what will the Gregorian calendar evolve into, it would have to evolve into something that, that we can use to mark time in a sensible way when we're not on this planet. Mm-hmm. And that's a pretty big concern. Oh, right. You know? Totally. Yeah, yeah, because even if we are settled on Mars, you're not going to have a 365 day year. Now, you also don't need a year that's structured around planting schedules and things like that. If you're growing anything on Mars, it's within a greenhouse and you can do it all year long. That is so interesting. Yeah. Obviously you can, but like, I think for the human body, like the cyclical nature of the day and night and all that stuff, like is your day all of a sudden going to be much longer because day and night are way longer on Mars than they are here? Well, the big question is, yeah, do you just adapt to... Actually, Mars days, Martian days are shorter. Oh, they're shorter. Okay. Yeah, All right. So then planet. is your day much shorter then? Your day is shorter, but your year is way longer. But your year is way longer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So your day is shorter. So you'd, you'd either... You'd either just adapt to a shorter day, mm-hmm. but then you don't want to interrupt your, your sleeping and your waking and things like that. But I would think that you might just have to every like few days... Just like sleep in or do something <laughs> weird, you know, to, you know, stay up really late yeah, or to sleep get in back or, on like schedule. With yeah. It. To kind of catch up. Yeah. But it's weird. Like, how do you how do you manage that? Right? Yeah. Like when you're on the International Space Station, they just arbitrarily manage time and mm-hmm. they say, OK, we're sleeping now. Yeah. You know, now we're not. Yeah. Because they're going around the Earth, you mm-hmm. know, 50 times in a day. But you've got your circadian cycles that would somehow be kicking in if you're on an actual planet with day and right. night and all that kind of stuff to contend with. I, I'm sure that there's like scientists out there that have been thinking about this already and they have a plan for it for at some point i mean maybe when we get to mars <laughs> i think there's probably a lot of theories out there but i don't think they know exactly what they're like gonna what's use. gonna work yeah. yeah and then when you leave the solar system and you no longer have the sun to help mark your your revolutions mm. you know whatever that means the earth time becomes even more meaningless yeah it totally you know? is. and that's why it's so awesome that the creators of Star Trek, you got to go back to that. Mm-hmm. They thought of that and they're mm-hmm. like, listen, these people are traveling around the universe at mm-hmm. warp speed. Like, how are they going to know what May 4th is? Yeah. Right. They don't care. Right. And it's funny. I picked Star Wars Day and a Star Trek analogy. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they were like, what the hell is going on here? And so they came up with and there is a way to convert your own, like today's date into a star date. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was all. I don't even know if they had figured out a way to actually calculate that when they first invented star dates back mm-hmm. in the 60s, because I've seen different things where you can listen to star dates mentioned in the captain's log because the next gen, they always had star date mm-hmm. at the beginning, but they didn't always do that in the original series. Right. So when once next gen hit, then it was easier to actually to try to it. figure out marking their times with with what we would know as our Gregorian calendar times. Mm-hmm. But just like the Mayan calendar app, you can find things to convert into star dates. But Anyway, it's based on our position in the galaxy mm-hmm. versus our position around the sun. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. well, I'm like ready to convert to the Mayan long count 
at this point. I just, it's just, too hard. It's okay. <laughs> just, yeah. I like the idea of an odometer just like ticking up yeah. and it just keeps on going. I mean, it kind of does now. You just got to remember May and June and July. And, yeah, that's dumb. Know. I don't want to remember yeah, that anymore. <laughs> it's pretty dumb. Okay. All right. Well, that's a cool thing about calendars. Mm-hmm. I, I just thought it would be neat to talk about that mm-hmm. as we start a new year. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Not quite as much archaeology there. But of course, the reason we know as much as we do about these ancient calendars is because of the ones that have been found in the archaeological record, in particular, the Mayan examples. There are some super beautiful ones. And if you go to the links that we put in the show notes, there's there's some examples there. And also of the other the other ancient calendars that we talked about as well. Yeah. All right. Well, as we start the new year, uh, I just wanted to mention we need to get more, I guess, reviews on especially Apple Podcasts. Mm-hmm. But you can review on other places that just not looked at as much, mm-hmm. like Spotify and uh, Google mm-hmm. uh, Podcasts. Mm-hmm. But if you go over and leave us a review, I'm going to do something similar that the uh, A Life in Ruins podcast did for their listeners. They said that if you left a review, that they would send you a sticker. So if you leave us a review... Be sure to email at uh, a life in ruins at a life in ruins podcast <laughs> at gmail.com no, with your address. Don't email them. And they will send you a sticker. No, don't do that. <laughs> address go- it to David Howe. <laughs> <laughs> and then go listen to the Life in Ruins podcast where we talked all about this. This will be right. their New Year's episode as well. No, but definitely go leave us a <laughs> review. And if you email us and tell us that you did this and then we go confirm, we will send you a sticker. I'll take that on. I'll do it. How about this? I will also the if you're not a member already, I will I'll give you a free one year membership to the Archaeology Podcast Network. I'll pull somebody from the reviews we get in January. Oh, okay, that's a great idea. Yeah, but you also yeah. have to email us and at tell yeah Chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork dot com because I can't pull any contact info off an Apple Podcast review. Yeah, yeah, you have to tell us who you are and that you left the review. So that's that's the one qualifier yeah. to be and, entered. You have to do that and the name you left on the review. Because yeah. you can just give your review a title and a name. We need to be mm-hmm. able to identify you yeah. and see your review and and then go from there. Yeah. I mean, I we you know, if you're gonna leave a bad review and you still want to be entered, like that's fine. But just then know that email like <laughs> a life in ruins podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. But you know what? We complaints. welcome all feedback. So like if you could leave the good review on iTunes and then just email us any of your like bad feedback, we'll take that. That's yeah. totally fine. And if you don't like emailing a Gmail address because it seems a little sketchy, like the Life in Ruins mm. podcast, then you can email Tristan at <laughs> archaeologypodcastnetwork.com oh, with all of your bad reviews. Email chris <laughs> at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com with all your good reviews. Oh my reviews. god, we've just fully confused everything. Okay, look, right. we'll put a summary of what we just said <laughs> in the show notes with all of the actual rules so that when all the confusing things that we both just said <laughs> don't make any sense, you know what to do. But the first thing to do is go leave us a review on iTunes. Please and thank you. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Bye! Thanks for listening to The Archaeology Show. Feel free to comment and view the show notes on the website at www.archpodnet.com. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at ArcPodNet. Music for this show is called I Wish You Would Look from the band Sea Hero. Again, thanks for listening and have an awesome day. This episode was produced by Chris Webster from his RV traveling the United States, Tristan Boyle in Scotland, DigTech LLC, Cultural Media, and the Archaeology Podcast Network, and was edited by Chris Webster. This has been a presentation of the Archaeology Podcast Network. Visit us on the web for show notes and other podcasts at www.archpodnet.com. Contact us at chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. Is your vehicle stopping like it should? Does it squeal or grind when you brake? Don't miss out on summer brake deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Come.